Maganda Magazine started in uh, 1989. Originally, uh, it was branched off from PAA because uh, Filipino students felt as though they uh, didn't have a medium for creative arts or creative literature, and uh, thus came uh, Maganda Magazine. And initially, in 1989, it was a uh, it had two publications a year, so one each semester, and then eventually after a couple of years, capacity-wise, uh, we just made it an annual anthology of uh, themes. Gunda's mission really is to um, foster a critical dialogue um, and open communication between uh, all communities of all cultures, backgrounds, um, and to really uh, start up those conversations and give people a voice um, who wouldn't, who probably wouldn't have otherwise. Because in a lot of Philam spaces, um, there tends to be a dominant narrative where, um, where a lot of voices are misheard. Like not a lot of people talk about like queerness and being Filipino, or um, even just like creating art together. Um, like you really got to search for those. It took me a while for me to find that. So the reason why I make an effort to come here, it's because um, I'm not finding it. There are many opportunities to find it, but it's nice to um, it's nice to be in Maganda where where there's a history and where people are like people can merge the critical thought and the creativity. So we see a lot of poetry, prose, visual art. Um, but last year we actually had quite a few videos, and so um, we actually like screenshot stills and then included it in the magazine. Um, so. Photography is also one. Um, anything literary typically is involved, and I think this year we were also tr really trying to emphasize things that maybe cannot, like, quite literally be put into the magazine. Things like um, performances and spoken word and um, dance and s song and all that. So we've tried to make up for it by hosting events like um, open mics. Each issue captures really what um, the editors-in-chief and the rest of the staff feel as though is extremely important. 